All right, guys, one last video on my Dell XPS 3060 Ti pre-built. So a few days ago, I did a live stream where I upgraded this Dell XPS from its pretty basic 10700 not K 3060 Ti to a 10850K, a 2080 Ti, and a Cooler Master T2, along with a Samsung Evo. Now the reason I didn't upgrade the RAM in it is because when you add different RAM to it, it knocks down the XMP profile to 2133 megahertz from the 2933 that it runs at natively with the 16 gigabytes of RAM that it comes with from the factory. So you could upgrade the RAM, but you would be killing your RAM speed while you're at it. And honestly, for gaming performance, that's just going to tank it. So 16 gigabytes, 2933, that's what it runs at. If you want more RAM, you have to get extremely overpriced RAM from Dell, and I don't recommend it. <laughs> the reason I wanted to do this video outside of the live stream is because I kind of got my ass kicked by a front button, and it wouldn't turn on. <laughs> I just It took 30 minutes to try to figure out what the heck I was doing, and I realized that I didn't have the front panel seated right. So, oh well, let's just do it again real quick. Show all you guys how to do this real quick, super easy. All right, let's go ahead and pull off the side panel. So inside you can see that I already added some heat sinks to the VRMs. Now these VRMs usually get pretty hot with a 10700. So once you add that 10850K, they get super hot. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and pull off this ugly stock cooler. So I just wanted to show you guys something kind of funny about this. This is the stock cooler that comes on this 10700. This is the stock cooler that comes on a 3770. So four core, eight thread. 8 core 16 thread. Dell, what are you doing? Let's go ahead, pull out that 10700. So here we have an Intel i9 10850K. Now the reason I went with a 10850K was because I found it on sale at B&H Warehouse for $330. Now that is a killer deal, $30 per core for the t almost top of the line Intel CPU. This is 10 cores, 20 threads, and on paper, it's about 20% faster than the 10700 that comes in this. So if you wanted to, at this point, you could probably sell this 10700 on eBay or Marketplace for like $200 to get back most of the price you paid for that 10850K. So the 500 gigabyte SSD that comes in this is a pretty okay unit. Like it runs 2500 read, 1500 write, where a Samsung Evo runs 3500 read and 3000 write. This is pretty much a meaningless upgrade. It's just, just to show that it can be done. Next, I'm going to go ahead and move the hard drive from being at the front to being on the top. That way we can free up some airflow in this pretty awful case. It's pretty easy to move it from the front to the top because both the hard drive trays come with the exact same mounting system. And just like that, it's on the top. I'm going to go ahead and pull the front panel off so we can add a front fan. Now, this case doesn't have any front fan screw holes, so what do we use? Zip ties. Now, if you wanted to be more um, cheap, you could just take the front, the fan off of the cooler that comes with this, and then just put it on the front. Go ahead and clip these. Now that fan ain't going anywhere. So before you install the cooler, you really want to put one of these fan splitters on it. I attach the front fan to the CPU connector splitter because if you connect it to the rear fan for whatever reason, it won't run. I don't know if it has something to do with the fan resistances, but just go ahead and use the CPU to tee off of. Now is a good opportunity to go ahead and put on the Cooler Master T2 that I got. Now I would use a 212 Evo, but it doesn't actually fit in this case, it's too tall. Usually this Cooler Master T2 has uh, stock Intel mounting clips and you have to get them off of there so you can use these little, uh, I don't even know how small they are, screws. You can find these at like uh, Home Depot, Lowe's in uh, sets of like 20 or 10 and then some washers to go on them. Now I set the first one on there so that I can get the screws started. I want to take the fan off of this so that you can actually mount it. <laughs> Go ahead and get these four screws started. So there's some surface mount components on the motherboard down on this corner over here. 
and I just pull the cooler away from it so that when you're tightening it down you don't actually accidentally hit any of those. I don't get these too terribly tight. I don't want to uh, flex this all the way down and touch the motherboard and scratch it. Moderate mounting pressure should be fine. Let's go ahead and attach the fan. Now to make this CPU work in this motherboard, you have to jumper the VRM cooler terminals. So usually, if you bought this with a i9 to begin with, there would be some VRM cooling from the factory, and it would see that there, and it would just let it work. But because this doesn't come with VRM cooling from the factory, you have to short these two posts together with a wire so that it'll think that it has a VRM heatsink. Now, I added VRM heatsinks, obviously, and you really should do that. Once they're shorted together, it'll fire right up and work. Lastly, we got a 2080 Ti. Now, a 3060 Ti is a perfectly good graphics card, but it is much better at mining, so its street value is even, its street value is much higher than a 2080 Ti. But a 2080 Ti is far better at gaming. You'll have to take this stock GPU bracket out and throw it away. It will no longer fit with your 2080 Ti. Now, I went with the EVGA 2080 Ti uh, XC Ultra because it just barely fits. So you're going to want to check the length on this and I'll throw it up here and make sure that your card is smaller than that. So you got to hook it in there and then kind of flex the case a little bit to get it all the way down. Pops right in. Now this Dell has a 500 watt 80 plus platinum power supply but it only has an 8 pin and a 6 pin. So we're going to need to turn that 6 pin into an 8 pin with an adapter of course. Let's go ahead and put the front panel on. Careful not to screw up your power button. And there it is. This thing is a beast. A 10 core 10 850K not overclockable, but it does clock to 5.2 gigahertz on its own. 16 gigabytes of 2933. I wish we could put something faster, just won't let us. And then the gorgeous RTX 2080 Ti, last generation's god tier. Still a really good card, still carries its weight in pretty much every game. And then to top that all off, we got the super fast Samsung 970 Evo. Let's fire her up. Now once you plug a Dell in, they always seem to start up on their own. Light touch of RGB <laughs> in the 2080 Ti. So I'm going to go ahead and throw the side panel on just to show how much better the thermals are now. Remember guys, not only did we add two cores, but we also added an even higher clock speed. So let's go ahead and run a quick Cinebench just to show how much faster it is than the 10700 it replaced. So before, it would just immediately pin itself at 100 degrees on all the cores. Now, it still will kind of touch that 100 degrees on this cooler, but it takes a good bit longer to get there. So we're finally getting up to that 100 degrees, and uh, the fan should start ramping up to make it even cooler, but it'll start down clocking, obviously, to protect itself. So yeah, a 5500 score. Now that's 20% faster than the, I think, 4000 something score that we got with the 10700. I'll have to throw it up on the screen because I don't remember. Go ahead and run Crystal Dismark just to show how much faster this M.2 is. And finally, in the 3D Mark, it scored over, well, I want to say it scored over 2,000 more. It scored 1,900 more points in Time Spy, which is insane. Like, that is a huge jump in performance. So yeah guys, that's going to do it for today. If you bought one of these and you were looking at an upgrade route, if you were to sell the 3060 Ti and the 10700 out of it, and then buy yourself a 10850K, a 10900, whatever, and a 2080 Ti, it'd pretty much be free. You'd probably break even, which is insane right now. If you have a, a 3060 Ti and you are able to trade it for a 2080 Ti and you're not trying to mine, that is a dead nuts no-brainer. You should totally do that. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Get subscribed. I'm probably going to compare this 3060 Ti to a Gigabyte 3060 Ti, so make sure you're subscribed to that. And like always, guys, have a great day.